finally is now starting on Tall Dream Altar. Game number two of DreamHack Winter 2011, ladies and gents. <laughs> Woo, finally got that sorted out. Yes, indeed. And by the way, for any of you who are watching out in the BYOC area, please come down to the Dream Arena and hang out with us. Yeah, we've got a huge, awesome, amazing, beautiful venue here. Uh, theater seating. Uh, I cannot, like, what a great way to spectate an event. There's, mm -hmm. there's <laughs> this huge screen, uh, excellent sound, and everything that you could ever ask for, for, a, for in, a, in terms of being a spectator. Uh, the game has begun up here in the top left-hand corner of the screen. The Red Terran player up 1-0, Evil Genius's Puma. <laughs> And down in the bottom right, we have the very famous Romanian Protoss player. It is Night End. I, uh, I love these European events because it gives these European players a chance to showcase their skills and gives their fans a chance to come out and, and give some good support. So uh, I am really, really excited as we move into the later stages of this event to see who turns out to cheer for guys like Sasa and Adel Scott and Naniwa. Uh, and you know what? There's a ton of great Swedish players at this tournament. I, I would imagine there's a lot of hometown support for them. Are there any fans of Sweden here? <laughs> I figure that's a pretty cheap question. I feel like I should cheer for that because yeah. Sweden is awesome. You know, that's a fun thing to do. Be like, any Swedish fans here? Because everyone, everyone in Sweden is actually just the nicest person I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life. There could be someone who's just, you know, digs graves and he's like, this is the greatest job ever. It's so fun. You get to work outside. It's seriously just so pleasant. Like, really? You went with the grave digger? Grave digger, <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, I've been playing Fallout recently and that's actually okay. a perk that you can pick up and it makes people look at you funny. <laughs> Fair enough. So... Uh, right away, we see a deviation in Puma's play. Uh, he's getting a barracks before gas, uh, and up, even at 14 supply, he still hasn't added his gas, so I'm already thinking he might want to go with a, a gasless fast expand, which would be a big change from his normal play style and what we've seen from him in the past. Yeah. At the same time, on Taldarim Altar, that is like the one thing that you can do as yeah. Terran. Everything else ends up being quite a good bit weaker on this map. He's going to plant a bunker down right away. He's going to end up um, expanding and just kind of proceed from there. It's the mid game where there ends up being huge changes. Night End is the one I'm most curious about. Reasonable openings would be something like um, a one gateway expand on 19 is a very popular, yeah. or expand on 20 if you like 20 probes. That literally is the only difference. I do, though, think that there are some very cool Blink Stalker plays that you can pull off. There used to be this oh, nice yeah. canyon right there where you could do some nice antics, but still, being able to blink up on this ground, being able to pull back and blink up here can help contain that Terran player. Blink increasingly becoming a popular choice instead of the more static Colossi. And like you said, Warp Prism's not only good, but definitely help earn you fans. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I feel like that's still a gap you can blink across. Uh, I, I remember when the latter version of this map was first patched, <laughs> the players were like, well, we don't need the low ground. We can still blink across that. And so. you know, I'm 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 going to be entirely honest. I thought about that, but as a commentator, I don't want to. I don't want to put yourself out there. And yeah, just I don't want to risk. That's a <laughs> that's a very dangerous play, man. That's like going two racks blind against a random player. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's a really cool observation that you just made. Uh, a blink play against one racks expand can be oh. really really good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good observation you made. Sometimes casters try to cover up their lack of knowledge <laughs> no, while casting, no, no. and I'm like, absolutely, I'm, no. <laughs> I've done that several times since we went live. No, no. No, the, the, the blink play is what I'm trying to refer yeah, to here. Yeah. Um, I, and some of the North American players, uh, that, like Doro, for example, is a guy that is not afraid to just go blink all in when he sees his kind of fast explained play. So um, mm -hmm. the thing about it is, for Night In to do that, he's basically saying, I don't feel comfortable playing a macro game against you. And I don't think that's his play style. I don't think that's his, that's his mindset. And we do mm -hmm. see he has expanded off just the one gate here. And uh, he is going to be taking it into the mid game. We do have that probe nicely planted at one of the watchtowers. We have one stalker sort of clumsily making his way forward. I say clumsy because he is the descendant of the Dragoon. Of so course. he will at least inherit some of that. And ooh, Puma getting a fourth barracks up. You know, Puma has been practicing a good bit with De Muslim. Uh, and De Muslim's a huge fan of the mass barracks openings. I think the biggest key to note is no gas geysers. And Puma does barely have enough money to plant those geysers down, but he's still not going to get them because of how much money it sucks up to constantly shove out that many Marines. Very, very clever timing by Puma. It's very subtle uh, with this sort of mass barracks play, but if you can pull it off right, you have way more Marines than you'd expect. Yeah, something that Puma does so well is deny intel. 
Uh, he's got four racks, but he's not showing a million Marines. He's got four Marines camped at the top of that ramp. Knight in is not really, ooh, not really able to see anything. Uh, and this Marine's just able to utilize that high ground to keep this Stalker out, uh, keeping everything hidden from his opponent. Now, Knight in, I mean, I, I, oh, I just want to cry. He's getting his second robotics facility. I would bet you a million, billion, billion dollars, or I guess that'd be like one trillion kroner, um, that Naiden is going to immediately plop down that robotics bay and go straight for the Colossus, and that, that hurts my soul. I would want to see something like a much, much earlier um, blink or a much earlier expand or anything other than that ultra-passive Colossus. Yeah, now he's throwing down geysers three and four, but look at this. Just now taking the gas on Puma's end. That's the sort of timing you have to be well aware of when you do this mass barracks play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the robo style is just, it, it's a little bit antiquated. Um, but, but if he gets a Colossus out, it's going to help a lot. Oh my god, there's so many Marines streaming across the map here. Oh wow, oh wow. This could just be it, man. Oh, oh, oh looks like Puma's going to be advancing forward. This is a very De Muslim esque timing push. It looks like Puma practicing in that EG house, definitely getting a lot of the benefit there. Is that Guardian Shield going down on some very nice force fields, but will it matter? It looks like he's trying to pull back. He manages to pick off one of the sentries. The second sentry, the third one falls down. We're seeing the Marines do a lot of damage, and Night End neglecting to even micro at this point in time. Puma is getting himself a nice, healthy advantage. Uh, yes, the reinforcements have stopped streaming across the map, but I don't know that it even matters. These, this handful of Marines, this hit squad here of about 10 Marines doing tons and tons of damage, uh, already has killed about seven workers, killed the entire army of Night In, and more units falling down. Reinforcements popping out for Night In, but, can, but is it enough? Oh, and it, even as you see on the production tab, Puma even adding on a command center. Naiden will definitely not die to this attack, but the damage has been done. A single Ooh. immortal pops on out, walks right into the fray. And at this point, Puma is just picking off as many probes as he can. And look oh. at that amount of damage. Ugh, 29 to 46. Yeah. 17 workers killed off. A huge win. And Puma now easily getting up his stim. And a third command center, Puma clear advantage. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, and this seems to be a little bit of a, of a chink in the knight in armor. He seems to be vulnerable to these off timings. Uh, we saw the same thing on Metalopolis where Puma pushed with uh, a couple of medevacs and some marine marauder was able to cancel that nexus and, and keep that nexus from going up for a really long time. Here on Taldorian Malter he pushes with that weird, uh, you called it a de muslim esque uh, marine push at sort of an off timing that players aren't as accustomed to seeing and it did so much damage. Yeah, and you know the one thing that I really quite enjoy um, is a sort of modern play style. White Raw has been doing this a lot, where he will just um, see and expand, and he'll throw down six gateways and then not even use them. And then suddenly, if that sort of push comes, he can easily yeah. plop down six, seven, eight zealots, something like that, get the defense he needs up, and then proceed as normal. Puma right now at a clear lead, getting the combat shield, getting the stim, no concussive shell, even begun researching. Two reactors, factory and starport, en route. Puma taking out the third. I mean, every advantage in the book goes to the Terran player. But Naiden, I think, is just going to try to do some sort of big push with yeah. a couple of immortals, a lot of sentries, and just see if there's some miracle that he can pull back through with. This, this really hurts my heart a little bit because he went for that super fast robo, as you said, and he's not even going to get up to Colossus Tech. He's just like, oh, I've taken too much damage. I've got to do some sort of all-in. Maybe I can do it with a couple of mortals. Uh, but it's going to be so hard to make this work. And we even see it looks like this one single SCV. Naiden's doing everything he can to try to deny it. He doesn't want to get spotted. And it looks like Puma will end up losing that one SCV. Yeah, Puma got a glance at the tower. He saw an immortal and a stalker there. I don't know if that's going to uh, key him into what's up. But I really don't know that it matters. There's two bunkers at his front. He's got a lot of marine marauder. He's able to produce marauders three at a time. Cut concussive shells on the way. Stim and combat shields both about to finish. This is looking very dangerous, and if we actually look at Naiden's camp, he has nothing but stalkers being produced, and another SCV from Puma sneaks in. That is a huge loss, and he sees the chrono-boosted uh, warp gates. He might even just lift off his orbital command, but no, it looks like Puma does want to keep that third up, and right now Naiden has a pretty intimidating force of units. It's all going to be down to whether those force fields can plant down properly because the two medevacs are not quite done yet. Oh. Uh, this army is actually surprisingly scary. It's a little bit larger than Puma's army. That orbital Ooh. does end up lifting, and it's going to fall, oh, I think. Oh, no. Oh, Night in may be able to bounce back a little bit, kills off that orbital. Puma's immediately going to start a new command center, but uh, I don't think Puma can engage this army just yet. Puma's got to be very careful. He is going to fall back behind these bunkers. I think that is the smart play right now. Night in. 
Ooh, is gonna go for it. He tries to spread out his army. He throws down the force fields. He needs to take down the bunkers, but I don't know if he can quite manage to get the rest of this army engaged. It looks like there's some great repairs going down by Puma Knight and starting to lose a lot of units. Needs to get another round of warpins. There it is going down. A nice arc. Immortals in the back doing some good damage, but it looks like Puma starting to bleed through. Sprints ahead. Puma will be able to annihilate this force. The Immortals are done, and Knight End doesn't even play it out. A good game. Night and gets cleaned up in quick 2 0. Yeah. Uh, you know, Puma's had some terrifying TVP for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's been no mm -hmm. secret. Uh, he's got a reputation for being a 1 1 1 but we saw here that he mixed it up twice. Yeah. And he's yeah. still able to make some stuff happen. So, uh, a very decisive two games there for, uh, for the evil geniuses Puma.